All right. I do believe we are live now. Yep, I see our attendees shooting up, so we'll give everyone a second to come on in. Over 100 people already. That's fantastic. If you can hear us now, hello, everybody. We'll, uh, we'll do a proper introduction. There we go. It's wonderful to see so many attendees shoot into the room. That's wonderful. 180. All right, I think we have everybody in and hello to all our Malt Shop Memories cruisers. I am your virtual cruise host. I get to be your virtual cruise host nowadays, Jason Venner. Obviously, if you've been on the Malt Shop cruise in the past, you know me very well. I'm the guy who gets to go out on stage along with uh, the Geeter, the man, uh, the myth, the legend who will get on here in a few minutes, Mr. Jerry Blavitt and say hello to you each evening, introduce all the wonderful acts, and I have the honor of guiding you through your cruise. I get to be your virtual cruise host uh, today, and as of recent, if you've been going through and watching some of the wonderful content we've been airing, and I am joined on this webinar by two gentlemen who you know very well if you've cruised with Star Vista Live in the past. Uh, on one side here, we have Mr. Alan Rubens, Senior Vice President and Executive Producer of many of our different cruises. Hey, Alan, thanks for being with us. Awesome, and everybody. And uh, over here, we also have Mike Jason, Senior Vice President and Executive Producer of the rest of the Star Vista Live Cruises. Mike, thank you for being with us. Hey, glad to be with you. Uh, gentlemen, I, I know obviously we've taken a little time out to, to get together and do this, and I, I feel a little bit responsible uh, because I said to you guys at one point, you know, I think it would be great to, to get out there and say hello to uh, all the wonderful cruisers. And, you know, no matter how many times I say anything, and it takes you to agree so I want to compliment and thank you both for taking a few minutes to be here with us and to, to chat, answer some questions, and to connect with all of our malt shop cruisers. Happy to do it. I wish I could see them all. I'd like to see all 180 faces. <laughs> uh, I know. There's a handful of faces out there. We have 100 and, uh, 242 faces on now uh, with us. So a sail away party. It is. It's kind of like its own version of a sail away party. Uh, before, now, uh, to all our guests out there, we asked that you were able to submit questions. If you had questions, some of you contacted individuals directly. Some of you actually submitted your questions via the uh, uh, the Google link that was sent out. Regardless of how you got your questions in, we got a lot of them. Now we're going to be here for about an hour. Uh, we find that that's about the time span that people can uh, can can handle. So we're going to be here about an hour, and we'll get through as many questions as we can. Uh, we're going to lump a lot of the questions together because. Uh, as, as always happens when you have large numbers of people, many of the questions are actually very similar. So uh, before we go into your questions, uh, you, you the guests, before we go into your specific questions, I would actually like to, to actually ask Mike and Alan to give us a little bit of background and maybe cover some of the general uh, questions and understanding right here at the top so we don't have to individually go through um, a bunch of those questions. So. Uh, Mike, I'll actually start with you if you'd be so kind. Um, one of the main questions we get, and I know something that's important that we talk to the guests about, is the relationship between Star Vista Live as a charterer, as we call it, and Holland America Line as a cruise line. I think sometimes that line is is not always understood and there's some gray area. Would you mind talking about that relationship? Absolutely. It's a, it's a great question and one I live with. Uh, for years and years and years as I negotiate all the uh, contracts with the cruise lines. Um, very simply put, we lease the ship from Holland America in this case, and that is an absolute uh, ironclad lease. The second we um, second we lease the ship, we start paying them uh, installments against the ship itself. We own that ship. Uh, if we sail empty, we pay them the same amount. In fact, if we sail empty, we pay them more than if we're full, there are all kinds of penalties. We're not having people, enough people on board. Uh, there are no changes that are allowed. Um, and so we can we can't move the ship, we can't delay the ship, we can't switch the ship, we can't do anything unless they allow us. And they've been wonderful partners. And so I don't wanna, but you know, they're a big company and they're deliberate and every kind of change or any every adjustment really requires me to go back to them, get them to legally agree to it. And um, and so any change really has to has to be done. Uh, the other thing that seems to come up a lot too is that the charter companies, Holland America in this case, and we also deal with some others. They uh, once they have a license with us, a lease with us, they do not offer us things they offer to their own guests. 
So they may offer a special amenity or a special deal of some sort. Uh, and they, they absolutely will not and do not offer that through to us under the theory that you lease the ship. Those are the terms. What we do with our customers is separate from you. I wish it was different um, and, and I wish they passed everything through, but they don't. So I think it's, you know, for me, it's second nature, but it's, it is confusing because people think it's our decision. We're their guests as well. And so things like security and the ports that we go to and the, the protocols, every single other thing is really controlled by them. They don't consider us employees. Um, they consider us guests like you, you'd you be at a wedding in a hotel. Uh, <laughs> you know, you have some latitude, but very little, mostly about the entertainment. And so uh, lots of stuff we do control, but, you know, the ship itself is controlled by them. So that's it. It's a third party relationship. It's a lease agreement. They've been great to work with. But they're slow and deliberate, and and um, you know, so I wish that would change sometimes. But uh, but they, we always get to the right place with Holland America. I say that about them. And I know it's different in every case. So I, not to pin something down, but what is the general time frame in discussion with the ship in terms of entering a lease agreement with the ship? And and again, general, not pinning it down. But I mean, it's 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 long. It's farther out, I think, than people recognize at times. Yeah, I have to start about 20 or 20 months ahead of the cruise. So before we go on 20, I'm already talking about 21. Um, and it gets complicated because I need to have a week and we need a week before to load things in. Uh, and a lot of times the ship is being repositioned. Uh, also the ports. So we want to get certain ports that so that we can bring the artists in and out comfortably in the midpoint. And so lots of times uh, we'll be switching ports. We won't be get, able to get into a port. So usually the, the minus 20 months till about minus 18, 16 months is all that stuff, all that kind of where are we going? When do we leave? Can I get from this island to that island in time? Will they welcome us when we're there or are they all already full? Will the artists be comfortable flying in that? Are there a lot of flights from Los Angeles or New York? Um, to to the island. Is it an island we've been to before? So we try and mix it up. Uh, unfortunately, they're not making new islands. So sometimes we yeah. we're forced to <laughs> visit beautiful islands a second time too quickly. So, but it, it is anywhere from 20 months before. You can hear him. Yeah. Okay. I can hear uh, you guys, but I can't hey, see you. I think we just uh, opened up the line somehow to Sydney and Jerry. We are going to be joined by Mr. Jerry Blavitt here. Uh, relatively soon, but we're gonna hold. We're gonna hold, Jerry. Jerry, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, my man. But I don't know if I can see you, but that's okay. Good. I don't worry, you. brother. Don't worry. You don't have to see me. <laughs> we'll get you linked in in a minute. Um, Sydney, would you mind jumping on that for me? Uh, before we bring Jerry in, though, we wanted to handle a couple of a uh, couple more general questions before we get into the actual um, the, the the lineups and and whatnot. Uh, so actually, uh, and Alan or Mike, either of you can handle this one. So as we talk about the relationship with a cruise line itself, when it comes to things like what Malt Shop is facing right now and what uh, our Flower Power cruise uh, faced at uh, just here uh, a month or so ago, when we're faced with some difficult decisions and you're in close contact, I assume, with the cruise line, how is the decision made to postpone a charter or, or a cruise, you know, based on, on situations? Oh. Well, Flower Power, we were right on top of Flower Power was yeah. right on top of basically the whole world shutting down. So uh, we had decided to uh, postpone the cruise prior to the cruise industry shutting down, but it came about 48 hours later that the cruise industry shut down. Uh, and uh, as you said, we're in constant contact so with the Jerry, cruise lines. Yo, baby. The Mike, Allen, and Jason, world. right? And everything I, that we I just could, could hear you, baby. You can Sorry, only hear us. Now. Okay. Yeah. Sydney, you're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're uh sorry to cut you off, Alan. Uh, for all our guests watching, of course, technology is a wonderful thing. It gives us the option to be able to do this, but we always have to play the games in the middle where we try to make sure it all works. Continue, Alan. Okay. And our biggest concern is the safety of our passengers and of our artists. So we constantly monitor the situation and try to make the decisions to best know that that is our main concern. How can we keep everybody healthy, feeling safe, feeling good, secure to come on the boat and then put on the type of experience that they expect from Star Vista? So all of that goes into when Mike and I sit down and discuss these things and run through these things with the boat. How can we make our customers feel safe? How can we keep them safe? And how can we give them basically 
the same experience and even better on a yearly basis than they did last year and accustomed to always wanting to come back with us because of the event that we put on. Yeah, I would say I, I speak to uh, Holland America three or four times a week. And I speak to all of our competitors uh, in terms of a competitor uh, charter lines, trying to find out what they're doing. We also talk to a couple of industry groups as well. And um, so, you know, a lot of it is we reflect some of the uncertainty that exists at the in Holland America, the charter lines. They were going to start sailing in June and then it was yeah. later and now it's. And so, you know, we kind of knew we had a really pretty good feeling about where we were heading. Uh, but again, it, until we have an amendment that's signed by both parties, you know, they didn't really allow us to tell anybody what, what was going to happen. And so we were in a little bit of an uncomfortable position where we had been in discussions with them, but literally within 24 hours of signing that amendment, we messaged everybody. And, you know, I'm disappointed. I didn't do it quicker. I'm disappointed that we have, we're not going, but, uh, but we did reflect the uncertainty in the industry. We said, you know, the information is telling us that November 21 is much better than November 20th. Yeah, the, cru the cruise industry itself is not sure of the rules and restrictions yeah. that they'll be sailing with when they come back. They may only be able to go 60% of a boat, 50% of a boat, 70% of capacity. Those are rules that, that wouldn't work well for us and the type of cruises, the boats, and the amount of customers that we have. So as Mike said, we may choose what we would like to do we have to wait till the boat acknowledges that, agrees to it, and we sign a piece of paper, then we can safely say to our customers, here's what we've done. And I think that's an important point too, is you know, a lot of the guests, and the reason we're, you know, for all of you watching and listening, for the reason we're kind of, you know, attacking this point a little bit is it's it's predominantly one of the number one questions that people have submitted. And there's there's dozens of them. In fact, if you go back, you know, over a couple of months, there's hundreds of them. And that's fair, totally fair. Uh, hence us tackling into it now but um I, I think it's vital that people all of us understand you know it's easy to forget i guess that the cruise lines determine a lot of what's going to happen you know the charters you know star vista live doesn't go in and say this is what we're going to do on malt shop the cruise line indicates you know how it's going to how people are going to be screened if they're going to be screened you know there was a message that came out that you know anyone over a certain age had to have this or that or, you know had to go through different levels uh mike would you talk a little bit about the discussions you've had with the cruise lines in terms of uh, of what they've asked and then kind of what they've pulled back from and what potentially we could be facing that maybe they're talking to you about yeah it's interesting uh i'm kind of reflecting their uncertainty to some degree i think in some yeah. ways we're more certain than they are you know we knew that november was not going to be an optimal time and we we allowed them to kind of catch up to us they seem not to want to acknowledge it early they they had some you know some thoughts about starting earlier than they really were going to so uh we were never going to take anybody out when it was unsafe but it's sure easier if I get an amendment with the, uh, the charter company yeah. in a cooperative way than, than a conflict. So we tried to avoid a conflict. Uh, they have, um, you know, initially um, said they were going to start in, in June, and then they pushed that back to the end of July, which I think uh, matched the CDC, um, which which was uh, giving them that day, 100 days, I think, was the date. Um, they don't have any there? protocol, I think. I hear you. Yep. Um, they don't announce, have any announced protocol, but I think it's going to be a percentage of the full ship in the fall. Um, I think they're going to do things like change the way the buffets work where somebody serves yeah. you. Um, there will be some certainly some distancing, whether they'll use the main theater the same way. Uh, I think not. Um, so I think there'll be very little um, cruising this fall, in my opinion, and it'll be somewhat restricted. I think the turn of the year will see them open up a little bit more, and um, I think it'll be a different environment. Uh, but I think they're still working out the protocols, and uh, we're keeping an eye on it. But it's 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 almost as though you know we're going to kind of hear from them. I think Clea, the uh, industry group, uh, is really the one who kind of negotiates with the CDC and and comes up with rules that all the charter companies follow. Um, but it is uncertain. But it's not going to be the same environment this fall. That for sure. It'll, yeah. be, it'll be significantly improved next year, I think. And I've told them, I've said, we we look for a full, everyone in the main theater, we look for everybody to be safe. We, our artists, our guests, and our staff 
are important to us. Um, and so, you know, we believe that in 18 months, the world's going to look much, much different and much better environment. And that's a frequent question we had, and and I'll kind of touch into it. You know, a frequent question we had is, well, as as cruises get postponed, uh, how is the decision made how far out to postpone a cruise? So, for instance, when you look at uh, as, as you look at Malt Shop 2020, this no, supposedly and it was scheduled for this November, how does it get decided to to be postponed a full year? Well, a lot of that has to do with the uncertainty in the cruise industry, as Mike just said. We're trying to look for a time period when things will be much more solid, much more understandable, much safer, and to move it and then have to move it again is something we don't want to do. So we tried to pick a date in a time period that we felt we should be good to go, the industry should be good to go, our customers should feel comfortable to go, rather than say, oh, we'll go April, no, no, we'll go May, then we'll go July, and plus, we have to, in advance, pick a week and the boat has to give us the company has to give us that week and sign for that week. So we just thought it was the best thing to push it back to a time period when the malt shop customer would feel most safe and we felt we could put on this, the great event that we like to put on. And it's really not a not an issue, uh, specific issue to this, but the ships themselves get redeployed. I think yeah. a lot of us sometimes forget that the ship is really not in the Caribbean. In the summer, the ship goes someplace else, gets repositioned, um, and, and so uh, it comes back. And um, so if you want that particular ship, it, it leaves in it leaves in like April, the beginning of April, and it comes back in, in October. And we literally have sometimes a week or two before us that the ship is actually back in, in the Caribbean. So uh, we not we like not to be the first week it's back. We like the few weeks. <laughs> it could go to Alaska, it could go to Canada. So it does go to other ports which are busy yeah. at that time of the year. So when it does get back to Florida for the Caribbean, it's close to that November time period. You know, it's very interesting too, because as someone, I, I worked on cruise ships, you know, as both of you know, obviously, and a lot of our, uh, a lot of our attendees here know, uh, I worked on cruise ships for almost 15 years, you know, as a, as an everyday employee. And it, I've heard a lot of, uh, I've heard a lot of feedback and there's been a lot of people outside of the industry specifically that are saying, oh, that ships are so dangerous, you know, ships are so dangerous. And it, it's really interesting. I don't know, and I, I I say this, I'm out of the cruise ship industry now. I don't work for any specific cruise line. I work with with your company directly, and, you know, we, we're kind of in the private sector, I guess you could say. But uh, I don't know that I've been on an environment, I've been in a, a venue that takes the environment as seriously as cruise ships. Uh, it, it's It's incredible. The level of detail they go to 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 quell, to quash, to 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 not even allow a lot of illnesses on board, you know, to prevent it at all. Not to mention how they deal with things once they're there. So, I speak with absolute confidence in in that if when the cruise lines really get ramped up and going again, it's going to be an environment that is no one's going out there with hope as a strategy. I, I really believe they're going to have a strong a strong strategy in place. I believe that, you know, the protocols are going to be incredibly stringent, and I, I think they're going to be really well thought out and uh, and really well planned. So I, I I'm very very comfortable with cruise lines once they make the call to get back moving again. So, uh, and again, that's you know it's only two cents, but having worked out there for as long as I did, uh, I, I would uh, now here's the big question. Obviously, the number one question that we received and we received so many of them. I'm not gonna itemize them or go through them individually, but is uh, is payment questions. With malt shops specifically, obviously we've pushed out a year. So now that the cruise has been postponed out a year, uh, a lot of questions about deferring payments, how the payment plan works, uh, you know, how the refund policy does and doesn't work, et cetera, et cetera. Would you mind discussing a bit uh, financially about how this works? I guess I could take that. We have been paying the ship uh, for probably the better part of a year already. And so we pay way in advance. And um, when we postponed it, um, most payments stayed with the ship and they didn't really uh, change our full payment uh, that we owed them. And so they did defer it. And we, what we did is we passed that deferral on to the guests. So we're trying to match what we're paying the ship. Uh, uh, the guests are paying us and that was uh, pushing into the fall. but. All the costs of the ship, all the payments to the ship are ongoing and uh, a lot have been made and a lot will be made. We have payments to artists that are going out. 
Uh, you know, we have actually booked all the hotels and the travel for the fall, and we're hoping to get some of that that we can carry to next year as insurance and marketing and whatnot. We're not, I'm not complaining. I'm happy. I'd love to be in this business, and I, uh, these are welcome, you know, things that need to be managed. But, but essentially, our payments to the ship don't change in the total, and, and honestly, they're ongoing. They did give us a, a deferral that we did pass on to the guests. So, um, so that's essentially the way it works. It's not they did it. not give up, they did not give us a 12 month deferral. They gave us no. a slight deferral, which we passed on to the customers. So because of the abnormal situation this is, uh, it's different. They they gave us a, a little bit of a window, and we're passing that same window on to the customer as best that we can. But we're all working within a very unique and different situation that can't be fully explained in the way, oh, you moved to 12 months and no, it's not working like that. We got them to agree to give us uh, next November a week to do this cruise and we all have to work within certain circumstances within that to get that to be the ideal week for all of us and all details to have organized and done in advance. Again, it goes back to the relationship with the ship as well. We're leasing it from them and if we were ever ever not able to pay, which would never happen in a million years, they want enough time to be able to sell it on their own. And so they want the money way ahead of time, um, significantly ahead of time, so that they know that ship will be full the week we're taking it and, and they don't have to take it back from us and put it into their own inventory. So, um, you know, while we're a great customer of theirs, they still, we're still, you know, issuing credit to us, if you will. Sure. So, and, and, and they and they have had a rough March, April, May, and June and July uh, that they have to recover from. So that we need to work with as best as we can to help them, but it, so they can help us as we need it. And absolutely, I mean it's been it's been unprecedented. I mean I think the world over has experienced obviously something that came out of left field, you know, to a certain extent, and you know really hit people hard. Cruise lines as hard as anybody. Um, and Mike, so if I'm hearing you correctly, the cruise lines did not issue a full refund of, of the, the charter ship. And then to your point there. No, they, they issue no refund. They, they kept all the money we paid them, um, and you know, which we don't dispute and they just uh, postponed yep. it and moved some of the payments, but certainly not a year. Um, and, and again, they, they, they never give us, you know, that much time to pay. Anyway, we have to pay in advance, uh, which will, which will continue. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I in I mean, obviously there is some guests. Could you explain a little bit, either of you? There's some there's some guests out there, and and you know I know most guests totally get and understand this, but there are some who who are concerned about payments and you know are concerned about not having you know referral you know, or, or uh, being pushed out further. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Ah, there we go. Sorry, there was a muting issue there. Uh, as you can understand, when dealing with uh, 250 folks, unfortunately, sometimes the muting happens. We're back now. Uh, what I was going to say there was um, there's a lot of payments, not just the ship, that go in. Would, would you mind discussing for a moment um, where other financial obligations might lie for Starvest Alive that that also, you know, each cruise being two year a two year process, you know? Like, like Mike said, we have the hotels that we get for the artists, travel for the artist. We have uh, the hotels for the customers that we have to put a reserve block on, uh, the back line renting the equipment, all the people in the black shirts, the red shirts, uh, and every other piece of this event that, that it takes to put on needs to be either paid or heavily deposited uh, in advance to make sure that everything reserved is reserved and ready for the time period we need it. And we've had to move everybody and everything back and everybody seems to be completely cooperative uh, in reference to the artists, the backline, the production, 
uh, the hotels were still working a little bit with and a lot of the airlines because we had pre-bought a lot of the airline tickets for the artists for November uh, who were willing to give us advanced time to notice because it does save some money getting earlier flights and things like that and not be jammed at the time that uh, we can't get flights for the artists to go in and out and the hotels on the islands for the artists. So there's a lot that goes into putting on this cruise and a lot of advance work, a lot of money that needs to be paid in advance and ongoing to make sure when we get there, we can do all that we plan and want to do. Yeah, we pay all the artists travel because we want to make sure they're there. We put them up in a specific hotel. We have buses to bring them in. Uh, so we've always covered all those costs and actually made all the arrangements for them so that we can ensure no one misses the uh, the cruise, uh, something goes awry. So the more details we control, obviously, uh, the better it is, but obviously it's also costly. Yeah. I, and actually, uh, speaking on that, and I want to kind of shift gears a little bit here to the next uh, major set of questions we have. And uh, before we do that, actually, I think we can finally get him in here. Uh, he's been anxiously waiting. Let's see if uh, technology will allow it. Uh, is 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 the boss, the big boss with the hot sauce, is uh, the geeter with the heater. Is Jerry Blavitt on by chance? Do we have him? All right. Find Jerry. Fine. This is just like on the actual charter. Anyone who's ever been on Malta. Hey, Jerry. <laughs> Listen, give me 25 cents that I could put it in a phone booth and talk on the line. What happened? What happened over here? My three <laughs> dear friends, Alan, Ruben, Jason, Mike, we're going to go to the sea at one day, but not this time, but we'll do it when we got to go. <laughs> Jerry Blavin, how are you, my friend? Well, I'm like you and everybody out there, and, and we love you guys, and we know all the problems that you guys have been facing. And we as mall shop guys and gals and also the artists are behind you, and we're going to do whatever we have to do to make sure that we're safe, and you guys are to keep us safe, and we're going to, we're going to sail. So, you know, whatever, we're ready to go. You know, Jerry, you touched on something there that I think that's that's incredibly important that uh, sometimes we forget is malt shop is a family, right? I, I mean, I, you've said it to me before. Talk about that a little bit, the resiliency and the family aspect of it. Well, you got to understand what you people have created. You have, pre you have created music that was America that you can't find anymore that this audience grew up with. This audience loves the music. They know the songs. You see them singing along. They see their artists in an environment that they could not see them if they want to see a show. They live with the artists. They're a part of the artists. The artists appreciate the fact that you've given them their careers back. And that's what Malt Shop Memories is about. You hit the right word, memories, okay? What's going to happen when we're all gone? What kind of memories are we going to have? We got to keep the memories of what the 50s and the 60s gone, the 70s, the, the good times in America. That's the important thing of what you guys do. And nobody does it like you. And for all you people that are listening, I got to tell you, I've been around this for 60 years. You know when you've been on these cruises, you are treated royally. The artists are treated royally. You become friends and you become a family all over again. And Jace and Alan and Mike, we're going to do it again. It's just, this is a curve. It's a curve ball. Amen to that. Amen to that. Uh, Jerry, I know you are close with many, if not all of the artists that get featured on this cruise. What are you hearing from folks? Not just about the Malt Shop Memories cruise, but how's, how's everybody doing? How's everybody's mindset right now? Listen, everybody is locked in as we are all locked in we communicate by this new technology facetime <laughs> facebook and all that bull whatever the hell it is and we're all like the we're like our people who are our fans we're all one i talked to frankie valley frankie says did i'm doing nothing he said i'm making macaroni i said frankie make the gravy macaroni you just boil the water <laughs> so I speak to Avalon, I speak to Rydell, and we know the situation, and we're just waiting for the time where we all can be together. And this cruise, when this cruise finally goes out, Mike, Jason, and Alan, 
this is going to be like the New Year's Eve of a whole new world. These people, you folks out there listening to me, this is going to be like the greatest of all of the cruises. Cruise number 11 is going to be cruise number one for a new world, a new time. And our music is going to be rejoiced bigger than it has ever been because it represents America. I feel like you're running for office, Jerry. I think I might vote for you. Well, <laughs> you already I, did. You put me on the cruise. <laughs> yeah. It's all Alan's fault. <laughs> uh, that's that's actually Mike's motto. Uh, Mike and I have talked a lot, and we our our new motto is that it's all Alan's fault, no matter what happens. Absolutely, it's, it's just, absolutely. It's all Alan's fault. Yeah. He, somebody just, stole somebody stole Frankie Avalon's wine. I said, "See Alan." Yeah. <laughs> but you know, guys, in reality, and I don't know if you you, you can understand it as much as I. I, I mean, I I live with this audience. They've made my career, they've made the career of so many of these artists that travel with us. And we are all in one. Uh, the audience out there understands that you guys are not gonna do anything that is gonna jeopardize their health. Uh, we're gonna do it and we're gonna do it right. And we're gonna party as the biggest party ever. So I appreciate, and on behalf of the artist, I tell you guys that. Uh, and Jason, you you know what's wonderful about you? When we first met, you found out a whole brand new world of the guys that were the baby boomers. True. You know, you know, and and you see the love that this audience has and the appreciation There's a for passion. Mike and and, and and for Alan and all those people on the okay. and the behind the scenes. You know, Sydney and and Janine and and it's 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 a family. And the people listening must understand sometimes in a family, somebody gets sick and you got to cancel the movie reservation or the dinner reservation because that person got sick. We got to wait until that person's better. And then we all go out and eat again. That's the beauty of a postponement, right? Is, you know, yep. well, we, we, we just push it back a little bit and we go out. Uh, Jerry, how have you been keeping busy? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm on the radio every day. And they could hear me at Geeter, net, And they go online and they can find out the radio stations that I'm on. I'm doing the live radio show from Memories in Margate. I'm doing a show entertaining schools. Uh, but they could go into the Geeter Garden and get a little drinky winky. But they can see me on Facebook, uh, Cloud, M. Cloud, or son of Red Cloud, who was an Ogallala Indian war chief. But what do you say, Red Cloud? What do you, what do you call it? M Cloud? What is it? You you know Jason better than me. X Cloud, M Cloud, oh, I Cloud, Sound I Cloud. Sound That's cloud. right. I, I I the son of Red Cloud. Okay, I Cloud, <laughs> the cousin of Crazy Horse and Sitting Bull. I Cloud. So you can listen to me on I Cloud, and they, they see me dancing by myself on the stage, uh, <laughs> singing Italian songs. <laughs> but you're, you're a one man wrecking crew, and I love you for it. Listen, I'm fortunate because I, Rydell's locked in in the Poconos. <laughs> Av Avalon's, he's playing golf every day. Uh, Frankie Valley, God bless, he can't move. He's making the macaroni. Macaroni. So, yep. You know, I spoke to Dion Warwick, and you'll love this. Dion said to me, get her. I am, I'm, I'm on vacation. I said, what do you mean you're on vacation? She said, I'm home on vacation. She said, I haven't slept in my bed for two years. She said, I'm finally enjoying my vacation at home. Oh, Dion Warwick. Know? Yes, Dion Warwick. I spoke oh, to, yeah, yeah I, I, I spoke to the Shy Lights, you know, uh, guys in Chicago. So we, as the performers, we're in touch. I spoke to Chubby Checker. And he's still looking for his royalties for the twist, which he's not going to get. And <laughs> so dream on, dream on, dream on, you know, but well, we'll all be together. Well, Jerry, if, if you'd like to stay on with us, you're more than welcome to stay on with us for, for the remainder of, of our call here. We've got uh, questions. If you got to go, we understand, but you're more than welcome to stay. Um, we have questions from I, the guests. So yeah, uh, I, I don't, go guess, ahead. I'll only stay on if the guests need me to answer a question. So I'll stay on with you guys if you want. Sure. 
you know, yeah. concerning their fears about yeah. the rock and rollers and stuff. Is that okay, Alan and sure. and Mike? Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Okay. We'd love to. Stay All right, there. I'm, stay go on. ahead. Um, okay. And actually, uh, Alan, um, that's probably, and I was actually kind of alluding to this before we brought Jerry on, the, the next largest number of questions are all regarding lineup and, and artists. And uh, as we postponed the cruise uh, a year, how did you go about getting promises and guarantees from all these artists that they'd be willing to do next year's cruise? Well, we, we've been in touch with the artists letting them know they had the same concerns that a lot of our customers had. And we told them that their safety and the experience that we put on was most important. And we would let them know as soon as we know, uh, as soon as we found out what we were doing and confirmed by Holland, we got on the phone, uh, got on email and contacted the artist. And Gladys has confirmed, the Righteous Brothers has confirmed, Jane and, Jane and Dean's Beach Party has confirmed, the Miracle confirmed, Mary Wilson confirmed over the weekend. Uh, Jay and the Americans confirmed, the Nelsons confirmed, Brooklyn Reunion confirmed, Little Fats Jackson, Jay Sigal's Togans, the Times, Charlie Thomas' Drifters, the Vogues, the Coasters, the Elegants, the Chicklets, the Coda Band, George Trilogy, Tim Sampler, uh, Cara Lee, the Elvis Tribute Artist, the EAS Band, uh, Jimmy Maddox, Bobby Wilson, Tommy Mara, uh, all have confirmed. Uh, the only ones who are waiting to hear back from, and it's been a little tough getting in touch with them, is the Dupree's and the Bronx Wanderers from last year's lineup. So uh, at this point in time, we have 95% of everything we plan to go with this year. And we'll be, as Jerry said, we'll be planning to do some extra special things to make the year's wait worthwhile, to make it a bigger celebration that life is back to normal and the malt shop memories cruise is going again. So uh Give us some time and I'll come up with a couple good surprises to add to make it, again, even more exciting than 20 would have been to make it worthwhile waiting, having waited for it. Well, well, listen, Alan, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and you don't even have to look because uh, a couple of guests here have some suggestions. So you can just take these right and make it happen. Um, uh, if you could find room in the budget in this coming cruise for Jimmy Buffett, uh, Jimmy Buffett apparently would be. I'm sure he's affordable. Can He'll that customer? Can that customer give me a loan? Because <laughs> yeah. I need a lot for that one. Uh, Jimmy Buffett on the same cruise. They'd also like the Beach Boys. Uh, so Buffett and the Beach Boys. I'm sure that's that's in the budget somewhere there. Um, <laughs> and uh, and Sadaka and Sadaka. So I'm sure that's all right in your well, budget. I don't know if Holland has a 10,000 passenger ship, uh, <laughs> so that we could afford all of that. Neil. Neil has wanted to come back. Neil Sedak is basically retired, not doing very much, been in contact with them a lot. Uh, Jimmy Buffett is just, as that customer said, see if we could afford it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we always and will try to make each and every cruise better than the previous one. Okay. And we'll do our best to try to make 2021 as great as it can be. And hopefully we've satisfied you in the past. That's why you're one of our family and we'll do it again in the future. Uh, Mr. Blavitt, actually, we have uh, we have a question here that is uh, is for you. I am a '50s fan. Used to go to right. the bandstand. Hi, Jerry. It's Miss Alaska. Hey, Miss Alaska. Will some, of those, Alaska. Hey, will some <laughs> of those entertainers come again? Like, can we hope to see Avalon, Dion, uh, Chubby, etc. Whether it's this coming season or the next? They're well, my idols. I can answer for these guys. Yeah, we want to work because you people are the reason why you have made us successful. And I speak on half and behalf of all the artists. Yes, we will work for you to thank you for the support that you've given us all of our lives. That's the answer. That's fantastic. Uh, and Alan, you already answered it and you kind of threw it in there, but we did get confirmation from Mary Wilson. Yes, took over the weekend. How to find her uh, daughter, which we found, and uh, Mary, who we worked with, and I've worked with Mary in a couple other projects. I knew she'd be willing and ready to go. Just had to get in touch with her. It took a couple extra days to find her daughter. We don't know where everybody is quarantined or where they all, all have held held up in during this time period. So it can take a few days, and uh, some of the phone numbers we have connects to, and then it takes a couple of days to get them. Hey, Alan and Mike, this is my wife, and I have eight 
Cruz, we love it. Are you still negotiating with Brooklyn Reunion by chance? I know it involves three groups, but if and when we can see them, we'd love to. Also, any news about Mary Wilson, which we already handled. Ricky Nelson remembered and Dean Torrance have been some of our favorites as well. Thank you for a great number of artists and all of the wonderful things you do each and every year. All four of those are confirmed. That was easy. You asked for an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm setting you up. I'm setting you up for success. Hey, Jason, Mike's got a question. He wants to know when can we all go get something to eat together and drink some wine? <laughs> yeah, a little macaroni and the drinky winky. And, and interesting it. that Jerry's on the phone while Jerry's here with us. Many of the artists I call and speak to. Is Jerry coming back? Of course Jerry's coming back. <laughs> Much as if we ask about them, they ask about Jerry. Where am I going to go? <laughs> <laughs> here's a great question. Uh, here's a great question that's operational. Um, what is involved in choosing the performers each year? Once you've decided, how do you also then decide who goes on to which stage, et cetera, et cetera? Well, uh, we, I keep a running list of who played on the Mall Chuck Memories Cruise, what year and when. We try to make each year's lineup as fresh as we can and exciting as we can. Try to find out anybody who's out there that we didn't know about before or haven't had before, like Mary Wilson will be somebody new for this cruise. Gladys Knight will be new for the Mall Chop Cruise. So constantly talking amongst ourselves and with Jerry about what will make the next year better than the last year, because it will be one thing to get off the boat and get on next year and say, oh, it's not as good as last year. So it takes us a long time to put in the effort to say, well, we have something that we think that customer is going to say, wow, this year was even better. This year was even more exciting. Yeah. And a lot of that has to do with what artists we pick and where we place them around the boat, where we can put the excitement on, how big their band is, where do they fit, how long their show is, uh, whether there's somebody that we need to put in the main theater so everybody has a chance to see them in either the early show or the late show, or to put them at the pool to create a big dance party. So a lot goes into that thought process and programming to make it the biggest kind of party and event and festival that we can make it so you get a chance to see just about everybody perform in the best position and the best place that's possible for the music that they that they play. I, I think a, I think a, a misconception sometimes too is that we don't view the pool stage and, and you know Mike, you're executive producer of many of these cruises obviously as well we don't as as creators we don't view the other stages as b and c stages and i think no. you know a lot of concert venues have an a stage a b stage a c yeah. stage yeah. we don't really do that at malt shop we consider the size of the venue for the intimacy of the show some shows right. are just better in a more intimate venue and, and the type of music that yeah. that artist performs right Right, because certain right. types exactly. of music works better in a certain type of venue. Certain artists are great at the pool. They're just great at the pool. They fit there. Some other artists, right. their music is more ballady, more easy, mm -hmm. more in a different kind of theater environment. So a lot goes into that thought process. May, may I also answer something, guys, about the fact that when the audience comes to see Gladys Knight or Frankie Valli or the Beach Boys, they want to hear their songs that they recorded, which were hits. The main stage is their songs. The songs at the pool and in the other venues, they do their songs, but then they do other artists' songs, you see, because it's a different set. It may be a 90-minute set. It may be yeah. a 45-minute set. So the main stage, really, artists that had multiple songs that the audience really wants to hear. Most performers perform in the lounge other people's songs other than their own songs, you see. Yeah. So, that, so that's that's a, that that that's another thing. And the audience sees all of the artists. And I remember Alan, you saying to me, and Mike, I, I think, and Jesse, you and I discussed that. We said we also see the acceptance that we get sometimes from the artists and see if you can move them to another bigger stage or something like that. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and, and Mike or Alan, either one of you can can just can talk to this, but and I know we're not going to get into other cruises because this is a malt shop specific chat. We have our malt shop guests on and we'll stay with that malt shop. But in with saying that, we do have other charters that we do. And some charters have are what you call top heavy, meaning you have more artists that only fit one or two venues and a lot of other than artists, which you can fit a million places. 
some are a little more spread out so it's easier to do to do the different venues but that was one of the main reasons that on holland america line we decided to put seats in the pool in the middle right yeah the uh, other thing that we do is we also look how the week flows we try to make it so you start your week some excitement and your week builds and again how your day goes we put certain something at the pool in the afternoon a show at night and then try to wrap it up with a pool show at night so we try to make it a flow to the week and by the day so that the most excitement and the most enthusiasm we can gather on a daily basis and place the artists and the music that fits behind the other artists and the other music that's playing around the boat and we we take ideas from different cruises and move them around we, we try and use the different venues more during the day later at night some some crowds are late night more than others and so you know we also try and use some of the smaller venues to to have people discover something that's just a lot of fun they're in an intimate 60 or 80 person you know uh, environment and they want a little bit of a they don't want to go to the big show they want to sit down have a glass of wine and be entertained and so you know those are some of the artists that fit well there and then lots of times the guests come back and say oh i really had a great time seeing so and so in the ocean or, or in the uh, queens or uh, or even the lincoln center which we use on some of the cruises so that's fun too we're always trying to figure out how to use the ship in a more and how to make how to how to create some surprises that the customer didn't expect and didn't plan on and like Mike said, get off the boat and say, wow, that was something extra special that I didn't know that I would like so much. So a, a lot of thought process going goes into that. Alan, we would like to see Pat Boone. Got to get his blue suede shoes or his you white You want to see him in his heavy metal outfit when he tried <laughs> to come back as a heavy metal rock and roller or in his white bucks when he the said- white bucks. <laughs> yeah, the white bucks. All, Joyce is just telling you, Joyce would like to see Pat Boone. So there you have it. There you don't, yeah. Well, um, let and, Joyce, uh, Jason, tell Joyce to look at the wonderful uh, spot that they did with Pat Boone uh, that uh, they were selling the, what was that thing you did with Pat Boone, Alan? Oh, I did an infomercial with Pat Boone. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Which was great. Song yeah. hits from the 50s. Right. Joyce would like you to transition that to the cruise immediately. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, Beverly actually said, and this is uh, Alan or actually Jerry, you might want to tackle this one. I know we've had Bobby Rydell and Frankie Avalon. Love them. But why not the Golden Boys? Where's Fabian? Well, uh, let me answer that the way I could say it. Uh, they're, you know, they originally were called Dick Clark's Golden Boys of Bandstand. And then they had to change it because there was some kind of, as Alan could tell you, there was a legal problem with that. Uh, they all separately are stars in a certain way. And they do get separate bookings. So sometimes they will work together and other times they will not work together depending upon the dates that they have. I mean, the Malt Shop Memories Cruises had uh, basically Avalon and Rydell. Fabian really doesn't work that much. Yeah, he really doesn't want to sing. He doesn't want to go on a boat. He's one right, of those guys right, that just, right, I don't right. want to be on a cruise ship. Right, right. You know. Frankie, we've had numerous times, and Bobby, we've had numerous times, and they're, they're family. Bobby and, and Frankie. Yeah, and Chubby's been on it also, you know. Yeah. You know. You, you know what's also interesting, Chase, is that when Alan and you guys put this together, I'll give you an example. You did a salute to the Philly Sound where you get the Orleans, you get Eddie Holman, you'll get another group from Philadelphia, you'll do the New York sound. So it's all planned where everybody has a part of this great country of ours with their music on this cruise. You know, so I gotta commend you guys. And I'm gonna say something for the audience and you guys know it better than me. The most amazing thing that I see is when we get off the ship and for people who came and booked for the first time, they cannot believe it. Sometimes we take it for granted. We've been on it eight times, nine times. But if you see the people that get off that ship, they say, we have never been on a cruise like this in our life. And that's the secret of what you guys do. Well, I, I think that's a big testament to Mike and Alan, and I, I think that also plays into one of the reasons we're having this uh, this this webinar, so to speak, is, you know, 
decisions to postpone, decisions to push back, things of that nature are not easy, but there is a product that is always considered. And there is an ability to produce the malt shop crews and to create the malt shop memories crews the way that people know it, the way that people expect it, and and what people, you know, when when you pay your money and you go to the show, whatever that show is, whether it's a show on land or a cruise or whatever it is, you have a certain level of expectation. And we have to live up to that, you know, at all times. Yeah. That's always yeah. in the back of our heads. And Mike spoke about it back in the beginning. It's yeah. and, and you know, Jason, guys, I think the people listening right now understand the postponement. This is not only the cruise ships that have been postponed. Everything in America right. at this point is postponed. And we who lived through this world, we understand this. And we're, the love we have for the music is going to continue. So, I mean, we understand what you guys are going through and we're sympathetic to what, nobody likes the fact that it's canceled, but everything's been canceled. So people understand that. Yeah. And that's why it's important to us that we postpone it. You know, that's why it's important that we recreate the lineup and we, we do the cruise. We are doing this cruise just next year. That's why the postponement's important to us. And I know that the NBA and Major League Baseball and NFL Football are planning to go back without an audience. We chose that we didn't want to do that. We didn't want to have a cruise without any of you being there. Be the four of us in there, right? Yeah. Well, listen, come to memories. I'm entertaining empty stools. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, Mike, there is a question here that, that came in uh, that I, I just saw. Forgive me. Um, why the change of ship? What, what happens? What causes uh, changes of ships? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, the Holland America has certain ships in certain places in certain times of the year. And so they may have the Eurodam in the fall of 20, and then the Eurodam goes to Australia or goes to Alaska, and then they'll have the, the New Amsterdam in. So they're sister ships that are essentially the same, but they don't have two ships of the same type in there. And that just happened to be the ship that was there during that time period. And so when, when you move, you don't move on the same ship, you move to a sister ship. They always have one of that size there, but it mm -hmm. changes from year to year. And they're just redeploying them all over the place. Plus, these days, they're redeploying them as they would normally, and then as they would abnormally. They're skipping Alaska and Canada for a few months and moving things around. So certain parts of the world are opening up quicker than others. But essentially, that was the ship that we were going to do. Yeah, we've used the New Amsterdam and the Eurodam both multiple times. They're, they're, yeah, they're, I mean, to your point, they're sisters. I mean, they're they're virtually identical. Very, very really close to being the same. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, a handful of questions that are all kind of around the same the same lane here. We covered most of it, but uh, just to reiterate, so they, so they don't think we jumped over their questions. Um, in terms of when we do get back to sailing, uh, the questions are, for long story short, basically, how do we plan on handling social distancing on a cruise ship? Uh, with crowded venues and things of that nature. And I know we kind of talked about it's a cruise line thing to a certain extent, but. Well, we're hoping that we won't have the same rules and restrictions that exist today, next year, November, and there'll be different types of social distancing and we won't have so many restrictions. Hopefully there'll be a vaccine. Hopefully there's a cure. And hopefully there's things that will make us all feel safe and being able to go on a Mulch Up Memories cruise and feel like we can just go like we went before and enjoy it like we went before. But of course, whatever restrictions that we have to deal with, we'll deal with in the boats. Uh, and it's their industry, it's their livelihood on a weekly basis, and they'll be set up to accommodate the rules and restrictions that we all need to live by. Yeah, I think the ships will, in, you know, will address some of these issues. The ships will, uh, but, but I was clear with the ship in that we want a safe and healthy environment but we also not, don't want it to take away from our experience. And so, you know, we have to wait till a time where these new protocols are totally in place or totally working well. People don't feel unsafe or um, at risk, artists, guests, and staff. And we thought, well, November is going to give them plenty of time to work these things out. Will it be different? Yeah, like, like after 9-11, you know, sure. flights were different. We lived in a different world, but... We're all, we were all still flying, and uh, we'll get, get back to doing this as well. I don't expect it to be an uncomfortable, difficult, because I've been clear with them that, you know, we, we expect a full party, but we have to make sure we deal with the same. There may be a vaccine. There may be some, some testing ahead of time, uh, you know. Sure. 
there, there, there's yeah. certainly going to be different uh, um, hygiene and cleaning. Not that they don't do it now, but it's going to be yeah. another degree for sure. Um, so, well, I think you touched on a great point in terms of you know when you talk about 9/11 and how that changed travel and how you know when you used to be the airport itself, right? I mean, before the plane, the airport itself was a completely different environment. And now you have TSA, you have a different level of pre-check, you have a different level of how you actually get through the airport. And I think you can absolutely expect some level of that. It, you know, obviously it's different, but the same concept of, of pre-check because really is, you know, and I'm speaking out of turn, but it, as long as you can properly handle a lot of it pre-terminal uh, and back in the terminal area, then you greatly, greatly limit any concerns you have once you've actually made it on board. Same thing with a plane. You know, everyone that's been gotten on the plane has been screened enough that once you're on the plane, you're on the plane and you're you're flying, you're gone. That's why they have seven levels of pre-screen before you actually get to your flight. You know, and I think you'll see something very similar with cruise lines yep. in terms of of terminal testing and pre-terminal testing and, and things of that nature. Yes. Um, and actually, to to jump programming wise into that, uh, you know, Alan, you and for malt shops specifically you and janine and i you know work an awful lot and, and some people understand wholeheartedly what counter programming is and some people don't always understand what counter programming is you know every year we get the well why do you put two things at the same time i can't see both that's the, that's the point <laughs> the point is so that all two thousand people aren't in one space at one time talk a little bit about counter programming well, it's it's a matter of putting enough things around the boat so that everybody will have a space to be entertained in with great entertainment. Each room only holds X amount of people, and we want to make sure if you're not in that room, you have something exciting and something wonderful to go to and enjoy and experience. So we'll create enough counter programming that everybody has a chance to be somewhere enjoying something. And if you miss this that night, you can come back another night and see it. Somebody will perform late one night in one venue and they'll perform early in another night, another venue. Uh, so we try to give you enough opportunity to see everybody and not and not be stuck with, oh, I have nothing to do. Every room is full. Every room is no seat for me. So it's a matter of being able to create the experience that we like to create for each and every customer. Now, I know we're, we're coming up quickly here on our hour, so there's, uh, there's, there's about four questions which all deal with the same concept of, have you considered doing something like malt shop on land? We continually look, especially at times like this, uh, at whatever we can think to investigate or research that might be something interesting to do to be able to take the brand and the experience and do something uh, but again, there's uh, it's a strange world out there, and as comfortable as people are to start to go out of the house, it isn't time yet to go. Everybody jump on a plane, go to a hotel, and go to live concerts. There's no live concerts right now. There's no live shows. So we'll continue to investigate, research, and think about it and talk about it on a consistent basis. But we're looking at, number one, the safety and security of our customers and putting on the best event we can whenever and wherever we choose to do and Mike, I hope I'm not talking out of class when I say that, you know, we've, along with you and Alan, we've actually done site inspections. So, you know, we've, we've looked into this. this is yeah, we, yeah, we probably, we flew down, I remember, uh, um, to uh, uh, Mexico and uh, took a look at the, I guess, the Hard Rock. Mm -hmm. But we've looked at places in the Bahamas and in and, and Key West as a venue there. And so we've looked at a bunch of different places. And uh, I think it's something that, you know, we, we eventually will do maybe as an add-on. I don't think in place of, of yeah. the beautiful part about a cruise is that that intimate environment, that, right. that camaraderie. You know, at a hotel, you get some of it, but not the same amount. And, um, you know, we feel that, that uh, the ship just offers us a great, great controlled environment where people can have fun and, you know, not a long yeah. way back to the cabin and <laughs> keep up <all> night. <laughs> and, uh but yeah, I think it's something we may do eventually. Uh, well, before we wrap up here, I do want to mention to all of our guests that are watching live and those of you who may be watching in the future that uh, we will do our very best to, uh, there were so many questions submitted that obviously within an hour, forgive me for lumping some of them into general, uh, but there was no way we could get through the amount of pages of questions we got. We are going to go through them, and if uh, if you have not been followed up with already at some point, we'll absolutely do our best to follow up with you, uh, receive some sort of, uh, of a thank you for taking the time, and also 
uh, thank you note for taking the time and also some acknowledgement if you have a direct question uh, we'll do our very very best to get to everybody for sure i do want to point out too that there are some frequently asked questions uh, that we do handle and those are available i believe uh, if you look into the uh, the chat, forgive me. If you look onto the uh, in into your chat section or over into your uh, into your uh, there, it's popping up. Someone's telling me there it is. Uh, over there in the customer support under chat section, there is a link to all the frequently asked questions that we get, certainly around this time uh, for all of our Malt Shop Memories guests. I also recognize there's some guests that are watching from other cruises that uh, or you've done Malt Shop plus other cruises. We were sticking with malt shops specifically on this one and uh, we will likely do one of these for other cruises as well uh, just to make sure each cruise feels that they've had their questions answered so again frequently asked questions there's a link over there under chat and you can also uh, find them i believe on the website they were part of the email that initially went out uh, talking about the postponement and uh, again we'll do our very best to uh, to follow up with all of you uh, and before we get last comments from uh, from Mike, Alan, and Jerry, uh, there is one last comment from a guest I wanted to point out that I thought was uh, was sweet. Many of you know Peggy. Peggy is one of our longtime cruisers and uh, absolute love of all of us. And uh, she said uh, to Mike and Alan specifically, not a question, just a thank you for caring about your cruisers, artists, and staff by postponing until 21. Your indefatigable efforts during these stressful times is greatly appreciated and acknowledged. So, uh, Peggy, you're awesome. We love you and thank you for that. She's going to she do the feeling. gong show again. Yeah, she, she'll be involved. <laughs> She's in all of it, undoubtedly. We're going to get her to do the blue balls routine. Um, there's, no, Stevie uh, Wonder. Yes, yeah. There's, uh, she's not the only one. There's a, there's a lot of incredibly supportive comments. Yeah. And for those guests that had that had gripes or concerns, certainly not knocking you. We understand. You know, this is not an easy time. Everybody's going through something. We get it wholeheartedly. We're not trying to brush you, you know, under the carpet or, or say that you're not allowed to. We totally understand where you're coming from. That was one of the main reasons that Mike and Alan wanted to jump on it and, and do this uh, this chat. So. Uh, I would ask uh, Alan any last uh, comments or anything for the good of the order here before we. Yeah, I, I am as disappointed as every one of you that we won't have this cruise this year. I will miss seeing you. Uh, I will miss sharing the experience, but I'm pulling out a whole bunch of my CDs and listening to the <laughs> memories music over and over again uh, to, to feel like I'm there, to feel like I'm with you and uh, please stay safe, please stay healthy. And please come back next year so we can have our party again. Jerry, how about you, my man? Well, I'm very fortunate, as Alan just said. I play the music every day. And I see the people in my mind's eye who dance and remember the lyrics and sing along. So the audience out there is never, ever leaving me. I've always been a part of it. And we will see each other again and rejoice. Listen to the music. It speaks for what we feel about our heart and the music we love. Great comment. Uh, and before before I jump to Mike there, uh, I did just get a text follow-up. For those FAQs, if you don't see them on the side or if you don't have them, they're on the website for Malt Shop Memories under Booked Guests is where you can find those FAQs. Uh, Mike, anything to take us home here? Well, I have to echo uh, what Alan said. It was uh, when we kind of knew this was going to happen, it was incredibly disappointing after spending 18, 20 months planning something it's been a part of our lives for 10 years it's so important to us in so many ways that it's a blessing to do this and it's it's uh, it's it's difficult but it was the right thing to do we had to do it and we also knew that we would be together soon like people with their families that they you know have not been able to chance to see maybe and and haven't been able to travel that will all end we'll all be together soon and once we get past that disappointment we're focused on the future and I can't imagine if we have another year to plan um, all the surprises Alan's going to bring to us so I, I look no forward pressure. to seeing everything and be safe. You know I, I, I would say the same thing uh, for my reduced role and end is just I, I'm excited for the energy that people are going to bring to the postponed 21 version of this you know it's it's obviously uh, nobody looks everybody looks forward to this it's a, it's an annual family get together right it's an annual gathering that we all have and and to uh to be pushed uh, to be postponed back a year you know is never easy but it just means it's going to be that much sweeter when we finally get there and i know i for one can't wait so on behalf of mr 
Jerry Blavitt, Mr. Alan Rubens, Mr. Mike Jason. Thank you so much for all of our Malt Shop Memories guests for tuning in, giving us this hour. We do appreciate it. And again, we'll do our very best to follow up with all the questions uh, that you did send us if you haven't heard from us already regarding them at some point in time. Uh, and, and, and stay strong, my friends. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Continue to do what you can. Continue to, to stay as positive as you can. And to Jerry's point, you know, listen to the music. Listen to all that great music. And to Alan's point, throw on a CD or a record and, and uh, relive some of those memories yourselves. And uh, keep the community strong. Because once we do get back to doing it here soon, we're going to want to see everybody there. Thank you so much for tuning in on behalf of Starvist Live and the Malt Shop Memories Cruise. Have a wonderful rest of your day, my friends. We'll see all of Thank you, you as soon as we can. My man! Uh, <laughs> my man! Pop the band! Pop the band! <laughs>